some fuck. Some Just the fact itself, creating a real tank, a life-size tank, is such a serious challenge and a very interesting task. And, well, we embodied it. Three Russian friends are trying to turn their unusual hobby into a very unique business. The business of making functional replica tanks. Not bad. You know, as an American in Russia, sometimes I get this feeling of pessimism and nihilism coming from all over the place. So we're going to go meet these tank builders who believe that anything's possible, if you've got the metal. The idea came about to make a tank. Sergei Akimov, from the Moscow region, architect, businessman, and tank maker. This was back in 2014. It was September. We were pretty sure that if we took all of fall, winter, and spring, then we could put together a tank in time for the 70th anniversary Victory Day celebration on May 9, 2015. And we thought we'd be able to take a nice drive through the village in the tank as a sort of impromptu parade. Today there isn't a single MS-1 tank around like there were back in the 1920s, 30s. The MS-1 was the first Soviet-designed tank that saw service during the interwar period. It was a very light tank with a tiny 37mm cannon and two machine guns. So we really wanted to see how an MS-1 would move, how it would look, and how it could be made as authentic as possible. How the suspension works, how it handles when moving, yeah, so in a way it was sort of an experiment. So we really wanted to breathe some life into this tank that was totally obsolete and lost in history. We had to make lots of changes along the way. We changed the motor four times. Imagine this. We took it apart, put in a motor, set up the hydraulics. We then went out to the testing field, and it turns out that, for example, the motor just didn't have the power. So after the test, we exchanged the motor. We tried once more, and again nothing would work. But, on the other hand, it's such an interesting process, so masculine, yeah. Because you're constantly switched on, your head is working, I don't know, your brain is worn out. When we sit down and start to think, it feels like the smell of fried brains starts hanging in the air. Because some things are such a brainstorm. But the cool thing is we got a team together, and at some point we start to think, having different life experiences, yeah? And we start to come up with a cool, common idea. And we never stop if there's any problem. The reactions were crazy because when the information suddenly appeared that on May 9, we'd have a tank in the village, everyone came out, that is, everyone who was in the village. We drove our tank. I mean, it's a huge procession, to be honest, I'd never seen so many people on the street at one time in the village. Well, before we started doing tanks, each of us had their own business and career. And honestly, a good salary is nice when there is one, but when your career becomes a meaningless daily routine, your life quickly loses all joy. That is, I want my work to bring me a crazy amount of happiness. And this whole tank-making hobby is slowly turning into a real business, yeah. I mean, we didn't start this off as a commercial project. We just decided to do this in our own free time, using some savings that we had earned doing completely different things. I work in construction as an architect, and up until 2014, things in construction were pretty good, I have to say. There were a lot of orders, many construction projects, and I was able to put some extra money aside for this project. Well, yeah, money can be used in different ways, 
Someone rushes to buy him or herself an expensive car or something or heads off on a vacation somewhere. Because when we built the MS-1, the first questions that began to appear in the comments section were, why? Why did you do this? Nowhere to put your money? Why not spend it on something there? But the thing is, buying a car is such a stupid decision, in my opinion. But to create something like this and get carried away, to work with your hands and head for a long time, to work in a team and achieve such a result, I don't know, you can't compare it. It's impossible to buy. So far, Sergei and Yuri have built four types of tanks. A Russian MS-1, a German Weasel-1, a German Panzerkampfwagen 1B, and a German Bison assault gun is currently in the works. But their latest achievement are their Russian T-34 mini tanks. This is one of the latest projects we're currently working on. By being involved with large vehicles and customized versions, being engaged in the restoration of military equipment, I want to attract young people. Basically, I want to return to the time when you could actually control the equipment. We have plans to open a tanker drone next year. That is, we want to make a large area with obstacles with elements of a kid's tank biathlon, with targets at different distances. There'll be a lot of different scenarios, corresponding to a certain degree of preparation. That is, you first need to learn how to drive a tank, then learn how to shoot, and then there'll be... Uh, shoot? Well, these are kids' tanks. Inside of them it's a bit uh, empty to do any shooting. <laughs> on the one hand, it's empty. But on the other hand, everything is prepared in order to install a laser gun. Ah, by laser. It'll be based on laser tag. The only thing is, all the sounds will be in the tank man's helmet. The shots, rebounds, reloads, and so on. At some point in our lives, in my opinion, we got lost because everyone switched to a mode where it's work, money, salary. There's no strength to devote time to family and so on. It's all money, money, money. You need to earn, you need this, you need that, you need a better car, you need a better apartment, you need to go here, go there. And beyond this perennial circle, in which you run, it disappears. That is, life passes you by. You're not always satisfied with the result because it's always not enough money, no matter how much you have. But there's no happiness. For some reason, some kind of sadness is still present. You need this everyday work to give you satisfaction that upon completing it, it gives you such a crazy emotional lift. That is, such a feeling of satisfaction with oneself, with life. But many also say that when they have their own workshop and have money and don't know what to do with it, it's never been like this once. It's the opposite. First, you set yourself a goal. This goal is usually very difficult, yeah. And sometimes it even seems that it can be done, but not as much as you imagine it. Most likely it will be a little simpler, a little easier. And very often it happens that there is no money. Yeah, that is, sometimes you even have to choose, buy something for yourself or spend something on the current project. But I guess we really have the right goal or the right task in our lives that makes us happy, you know. It always just seems to somehow pop up like magic. Everything works out. For five years, we studied such a number of different areas. We learned how to pour metal. We figured out hydraulic systems. For example, unlike the guys, I didn't know how to weld. 
or for me, angle grinders were horribly hellish instruments that I was afraid to hold in my hands, and so on. But the desire to achieve a result works wonders. The last five years of our work have been one fantastic continuous holiday. I can't explain many things, but deep inside, I feel very pleased with this process, and I feel we are doing the right thing. Well, I think it's safe to say that when you open your tanker drum, there will be comments all over the internet saying that you're promoting... Hey, hey, chicken, keep quiet over there. That you're promoting... Well, we're in the countryside. Ah, uh, yeah, I know.